Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate the opportunity to be part of our Reconnect and uh, to uh, present uh, a topic that we think is important to a lot of facility operators, which is how they can best use data uh, to move to truly data-driven facility management, more efficient buildings and more intelligent buildings. And the topic we want to cover today is uh, data analytics. It's about more than fault detection and diagnostics. And I want to point out how organizations are addressing a wide range of operational and financial needs by utilizing their data and analytic tools. Our company is Sky Foundry. We make an analytics platform called SkySpark that works with building facility and equipment data. You know, what when we talk about analytics, what we're really talking about is creating value from device data. And the way we do that is by detecting patterns that basically represent deviations, anomalies, faults, opportunities for savings. But it goes beyond that. There's correlations. There's a proving that things are operating properly. And in fact, you know, the role of analytics is much wider than FDD. So. You know, when most people say analytics, the quick reaction uh, that people have is to think about fault detection, right? Detect faulty equipment, faulty operation of equipment systems, etc. And that is a very important and very successful use of analytics, but it's not the only one. And what we find is that organizations that embrace the full capabilities of their data and data analytics can address a wide range of their financial and organizational needs. And that's what we're going to look at in this uh, discussion today. So let's start with detecting patterns in equipment data. Now here's an example of a screen showing how patterns are detected for our different equipment, sensors, IoT devices, and how they're presented. And in this view we can see that they're presented as timelines and what we're seeing here is the actual patterns of behavior that are being found in the equipment operation, a cooling failure, lights running when they shouldn't be, temperature sensor failure, outside ear damper stuck close. We're seeing the exact patterns. We're seeing the time, the duration of this issue was that was detected. We're seeing cost calculations. Software has the capability of assigning cost relationships, cost factors, cost equations to these issues. We're seeing what facility the issue is occurring in and all the way down to what exact piece of equipment the issue has been found on. Now, this is one way of presenting these patterns as these timelines with all of this detail. Now these patterns can be actual faults as we've talked about but they could also be detecting of a trend. For example predictive of a future fault identifying a trend towards a problem that you are going to have. Uh, a good ex a, uh, example I use of this is, let's say we expected a certain um, amount of delta T temperature change across a coil in a system. Let's say we expected eight degrees of delta T. But what if we detect we're only getting four degrees of delta T today, but because of the environmental conditions today, four degrees is adequate that everyone's comfortable in the space, no alarms are going off. In other words, nothing has been detected to be a fault or an alarm. But what have we detected with that pattern? Well, we've detected a condition, a trend that's predictive of a future fault. And the analysts can highlight that for us. And that's different than actually having an outright fault. But we say, what, what, in the end, what we're detecting are patterns of things that matter. They may matter for cost, for efficiency, for, for performance all of which can affect our bottom line financial results. But here's an interesting point. They can also be a confirmation that desired conditions are being achieved, showing positive patterns. Everything's okay, all right? These temperatures are all within their accepted range. This energy consumption is within an accepted range. But now let's go beyond that, beyond the patterns that could either be false or trends or predictive and talk about another use of data with analytics which is to track calculate and report your key performance indicators and, and what's important here is you know that data can have different value and different meanings to different people in an organization and many managers are responsible for uh, financial performance across portfolios of buildings and their primary interest might be to look at their key performance indicators 
So here's an example of how software can take the data from consumption, occupancy, cost, etc., and calculate key performance indicators of all different types. And here's some examples. So energy use and your cost per square foot or per unit of production. And, you know, when we talk about a building, units of production might be an occupancy met metric or the revenue generation per facility. I like to point out the example of, let's say, I have a, a franchise or chain of restaurants, right? An indicator of their performance is the revenue per site. Right? Well, we can bring that into our KPIs. In data centers, we have power utilization effectiveness, PUE. That's a valuable metric often tracked. We can also calculate what we call delta KPIs. Calculate a value, maybe a consumption, KWH, per square foot per degree day of weather, right? Um, and then compare it to previous times. How are we doing this year versus last year, this month versus last month? We can also have KPIs that are summaries of the things we were just looking at, the number of faults per period, the number of times this issue happens per site, per equipment type, etc. And KPIs are really under, underneath in the software. They're just math relationships that either totalize or identify ranges or normalize the data. So with the analytics tools, you can have all your KPIs continuously calculated and available to you. But there's another side of KPIs, which is to track and report their trends over time. So let's calculate our KPIs and watch how they change. Right? And here we th see three examples of different charting types, uh, line charts with a fill area. And then we, in the next one, we see a baseline and we can detect which sites are above or below our baseline for all of our different KPI values. And here we can just look at the magnitude against a specific value. Right? So knowing what my KPIs are today, great. Knowing how they've trended over the past day, week, month, or year gives me additional insight into the performance of my facility. But now let's move on to another use of the data that we can collect from our buildings and talk about meter data, energy. Energy analysis and reporting is a significant value that organizations get by applying analytic software. Um, what can we do with it? Well, we can benchmark our facilities benchmark the performance as it compares with our own portfolio or with industry standards. There's numerous industry standards out there that show you the performance to be expected in the ranges of good to bad facilities of all different types. That's easily available public information. So now we can benchmark our facility against those industry norms. Or if we've set our own goals, we can benchmark against our goals. We normalize four factors, such as weather, occupancy, production, activity, in fact, virtually any factor that is important to our facilities and how we use them. And then the tools allow us to take all this data and visualize it to give us insight, right? We can understand the energy use profiles. We can see where we have energy demand peaks. We can see our usage and history of that usage over time. And of course, the end result is this, is we want to provide useful, informative reports to our different operators, whether that be energy managers or financial managers. This can support, of course, efficiency efforts that help us track the performance of investments in efficiency and also provide more insight and information to make good procurement and rate decisions. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Here's a view of what we call a delta baseline view. We have a baseline, which might be a goal or calculation or based on past performance, and we can see which sites are above or below that baseline on which days and the magnitude that they're above or below that baseline. That's the zero line in the chart. Now, when we have energy consumption, we often are looking at reducing that. Uh, the amount of consumption, the amount of peak demand, but there's another aspect of this. In the end, it's typically cost that matters, and the cost of energy is driven by the tariff rate from the utility company. And tariff rates can be highly complex with many different charges. Well, the analytics software can help us combine our energy meter data with the tariff charge structure. 
so that we can answer a question like this. Could you end up paying more for using less energy or could you use the same amount of energy and pay less? For most facilities, the cost of energy is not a simple calculation of you know, kilowatt hour consumption times a fixed number. Um, energy costs have uh, very significant complex tariff rates. So what we can do is we can combine the energy use data and the tariff base costs. And this is something that's very hard to do manually, not impossible, but our analytics software can do it automatically for us. Here's an example. In this view, what we're seeing is the line graphs, which are my energy consumption and my energy demand, plotted as lines, and then the bar graphs are my costs based on the charges um, you know, subject to for a whole variety of things. We, in this simple example, we have costs based on generation, costs based on distribution, costs based on demand, but tariff rates are highly complex and can go into multitude of charges, service charges, block and range charges, taxes, equipment charges, etc. The analytics software can take all of those charges and calculate your true energy costs in direct alignment with the tariff rate you're under for from a utility company. Next, what can we do with our meter data is correlate it against the actual equipment operation to answer the, the question of how equipment operation actually affects our energy use patterns and then of course our costs. So here's an example to look at. In the top we have what a typical energy manager might look at. This is a chart of my energy use. This is, happens to be my electric power, my demand, and I can see in the overnight hours I'm down uh, around 150 kW and then at this point in time I dramatically increase up to my first peak of the day, stay up throughout the day, and then drop off. That curve looks like a facility that is operating according to an occupancy schedule. That's helpful to see that curve, to see that, that pattern. But what our operators typically want to know is, okay, what pieces of equipment affect that curve? And what we can see here by this correlation, and this is what we're seeing, is a correlation between the meter data and our actual equipment status data so that we can see when these pieces of equipment are all on, they, they've all come on at the same time, that's resulted in this first peak of the day at this point in time. And in fact, it gives us insight into changes to control sequences we might make to smooth out these demand peaks. What we can see here is this building is not taking advantage of what we call soft starting or stage starting of the equipment. They're slamming on all of the loads immediately at one point in time when we go occupied, causing this demand peak. Well, that demand peak could cost a significant amount of money. Many tariff rates include what's called a ratchet charge. So if you hit a peak this month, you pay the same amount for the next 11 months, even if you don't hit that peak again. So here the analytics software is helping us clearly see the relationship between energy use and the equipment that's driving it. A very powerful tool for operators. But we can go further. One of the things we see now with analytics is take the deeper understanding of performance and trends and relationships of equipment that is available through analytics and utilize that information for advanced automated system optimization. And what we mean by that is we can look at the data, make determinations using advanced math techniques, uh, calculus, machine learning, uh, frequency domain analysis, matrix math, statistical functions, all of those tools look at our data and then make decisions to actually optimize our control system, optimize set points, uh, do demand response by telling the control system to go into certain modes or recipes of operation. And this is all possible because the analytics gives us deeper insight into operation than is typically available with logic-based control systems. Now, the other aspect, this data and these analytic tools support financial management of our organization, of our operation. And this is a significant benefit because while financial managers typically have pretty sophisticated financial tools, oftentimes the operational data has been hidden from them, difficult to get, difficult to work with. Well, with 
analytics software, we can give those financial managers, analysts, the same type of input that they expect. And we can bridge the gap in understanding between these two sides of organizational operation, right? The facility side, the operational team, and the financial team. Communicating to them with the same tools that they're used to using for their financial analysis. So we can create reports that put the information into format that speaks to them in the way they are used to and want to look at their data. So we can see there are a number of benefits, but we want to talk about getting there. What are the different steps to get to this end result and all of the benefits we've talked about? Well, the first step is data acquisition. How are we going to communicate with the external systems? How are we going to acquire the data? Are we going to be able to get live streaming data from control systems, meters and sensors, IoT devices? Or are we going to get live data from a web service, from a utility company, or from IoT devices that report their data up to a uh, web-based system or are we going to bring in file-based or historical data right and you need the ability to work with all of those types of data because that's the reality of buildings there's historical data there's data data and databases there's streaming data from control systems etc a key part of working with that data is how do we harmonize and normalize that data because it's coming from different systems it comes in many different formats and structures. You end up with a multi-structured, semi-structured data challenge. And one of the ways to normalize that, um, that we're a big supporter of, is an open source initiative called projecthaystack.org. This is a worldwide initiative to define a standardized tagging methodology to add meaning, semantic meaning, descriptors to our data. When you onboard data from diverse systems, you have to go through this process. And with our software, we provide automated and manual tools to do this. Next is, how do we deal with the fact that all the buildings are very different? We need programmability so that we can adapt algorithms, rules, KPIs. We need to be able to customize to fit the unique needs of the building, the building design, the HVAC equipment design, and how we're operating the facility for what goals. And also the scope uh, what we find is analytics is a uh, continuous journey, so the project will have multiple different enlarging scopes over time. So you need that programmability. And finally, the end result. How to make the data useful, how to present the results to operators, how to address the user experience. And you know this is an interesting point because analytics are only valuable if they inform our teams, our operational teams, our service teams, to drive actions to address the issues, to respond to the patterns, the information, the KPIs that are detected by the analytics software. And if the process to create these visualizations and report is too costly or complex or can't be done by the average operator, then the value of utilizing analytics is actually diminished and the potential savings will, won't be realized. So there's some te techniques now that software provides to address this. The first one is automatic generation of intuitive displays. And uh, what I've just shown you are examples of how our software automatically produces those views, every one of those views from the alignment and correlation of equipment operation against meter data, uh, from the alignment of meter data against cost, from the presentation of fault patterns to the historical view of KPIs. Those are all automatically generated. We like to say that the software is smart enough now to automatically generate the views on the data and the analytic results. But there's also a need to assemble um, custom views that might have multiple uh, panes or multiple tiles, and we can't require operators to have programming skills. And this whole area has seen huge advance in uh, the last few years, and uh, we'll provide a few examples here. A key a, um, point that we need to address here is how do we get this information out to Interesting, we're missing a character here. Um, how do we get this information out to different operators, different users? We talked about conveying information to our financial teams. One of the other ways that we do this is the software says, anything you see on the screen, you can instantly turn that into a report 
with a click, right? And or you might want to have those reports automatically generated and automatically emailed to your different users. So these are common formats that the software can export the data and the views to different operators who want to work with it in different ways, like our example of working with Excel, et cetera, or high resolution SVG images to build custom reports, or just turning those views into PDF reports that can be easily shared. And here are some examples of the, the range of different presentations on basically the same exact data. Whether we want to look at those charts and graphs of different types, whether we want to look at our KPIs with bubble charts or bar charts or gauges, whether we want to look at the same data in Excel or in tabular formats. All of these different views are available with a click on the same exact data the same exact KPI calculations, analytic results, etc. So hopefully that's given uh, you some insight on the different ways that the data that's now available from intelligent building systems can be used with analytic software to accomplish a wide range of benefits for facility operators. But we'd like to wrap up with this comment, right? You know, if we think about it, data is a new form of value. We'll call it data is the new money. If we know how to use our data, if we have the tools to use our data, we can drive tremendous value in our facilities by improving their performance, identifying the appropriate tariff rates, by understanding and benchmarking our facilities to identify the ones that we should invest more time and effort in to improve, and identifying the ones that are performing the best and identifying the differences that are driving that. So thanks for your time today. We appreciate the opportunity to speak to this uh, community and uh, via this new medium with RE Connect. We thank uh, the RE Connect team for all the work they've done to make this possible. Thanks again. We'd love to have you contact us. You can find us on the web at skyfoundry.com. Thanks so much.